Yo, what's going on YouTube, it's Ivan Steph and you guys, today we're going to be looking at pranksters and I'm not talking your just for last type of pranksters and I'm not talking your really, really weird type of pranksters who make everyone uncomfortable. I'm talking about pranksters who are just complete shit disturbers. So for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at three quote unquote pranksters who effed around and found out. Stop. And I'm using quotes because what they do is simply harass or commit real crimes on strangers and use the word prank in an attempt to cover up their tracks. Pranks should be funny for the prankster, the viewer, and the person being pranked. But as you're going to see from the pranksters that we're going to be looking at today, their idea of a prank is to completely piss off the person they're being pranked so much that they feel the need to use violence as self-defense. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the top three worst pranksters of 2023. So without further ado, let's begin by taking a look at a prankster who effed around and most definitely definitely found out. Meet 22 year old Tanner Cook. He runs a YouTube channel called Classified Goons that currently sits at about 62,000 subscribers and his TikTok is also sitting at 62,000 followers. Now what is a goon? A stupid, foolish, or eccentric person. A violent, aggressive person who is hired to intimidate or harm people. And that's exactly what Tanner Cook is, a goon. YouTube prankster shot and wounded by Target a Practical Joke. Shooting someone over a practical joke? Damn, isn't that kind of harsh? Well, you'd be surprised to hear that nearly everyone is on the shooter's side and even more surprised to hear how the jury voted in the trial of the shooting. But before we look at the quote unquote prank and why Tanner was shot, let me give you a taste of the cook. So he's got videos such as asking strangers to play naked twister prank, asking strangers to wet my whistle prank, and stealing beds from mattress stores prank. Here's a video where he pretends to vomit on Uber drivers. My emergency, I'm on the front of uh, PNC Bank. I have uh, two customers with me. What's your name? Anoop. Anoop? Anoop N. Anoop? Adjust. Anoop? No, A N N as in Nancy. Anoop? No, N Nancy. A whoop? No, N. A coop? Oh. Mm -hmm. Outside, 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 go ahead. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. hey. What are you doing? I'm going to puke. Hey, go outside. No, no. The video is, as its title, Tanner disrupts low-income workers who are simply trying to earn a living and put food on the table. If you're in your friend's car and fake vomit prank him, then sure, go ahead because you know the guy and it's all playful. But pranks are supposed to be funny for the prankster, the viewers, and the person being pranked. It's not supposed to cause any harm or damage. And as you can see, based on the reaction of the victims, they're not laughing. A lot of the Uber drivers are immigrants who came to the United States in hopes of a better life and are working hard for it. These workers already face enough problems, but Tanner makes it even more difficult by making these videos and exploiting them for views and money. The cook provides a lot of tasteless items to the menu. He films himself harassing and completely pissing off people and uses the word prank, making himself think that what he's doing is okay. Just get out. I gotta leave? Yes, you gotta leave. Just take you that. You go out there before we call the police. Yeah, oh, that's mine. This is mine. <laughs> I was gonna buy a mattress. No, you're not. Get out of my store. Get out of my store. Get out of my store. Just a hug, that's all. No, don't touch me. It's just a hug. Get the fuck away from me. Dude. All right. It's just one more fucking time. Get the fuck away from me. Dude. Or I will fucking shoot your ass out. Right the fuck now. Both of you. Look, I don't know if it's just me, but I don't get how completely pissing off people is supposed to be funny. They're just trying to do their job, which they already face enough stress from, and this guy just making it unnecessarily more difficult. He really drives them to the point where they feel so threatened that they call the police. It's just such a waste of police services when this all could have been avoided if Tanner had better tasting pranks. And some of his videos get even worse, such as one of them titled, telling people they look like sex offenders. You can't make this shit up. He really has a video where he goes up to random people and tells them that they look like S offenders. We can't have you here. What? We can't have you here. Why? Uh, because, um, well, no offense, but you look like a sex offender. What? Uh, you look like a sex I just want to let you know that you, you look like a bit of a sex What? Dude, I was letting you know to try to be nice. You look like a sex offender. What? Okay, can you go away, please? What did I do? You need to get 
get away from me. No, I just- Andrew and his crew really stepped down to the lowest of lows. Tell me how criminally profiling someone based on their looks is a prank. Stuff like that should not be joked about, especially when the person you're pranking could have once been a victim of SA or even could have been falsely accused of SA. It's just not funny. It's dumb like the rest of his videos. Okay, so now that you got a bit of a taste of Tanner and the classified goons, you can somewhat understand why people were actually happy that he got a taste of his own medicine. So back in April, Tanner and the goons went to Dolls Town Center, Amon, Virginia, where they found their target, a skip the dishes worker named Alan Colley. In this prank, Tanner and his buddy approached Alan and thought it would be funny to play a voice message that says, hey dip shit, quit thinking about my twinkle. What? What's that mean? And he didn't play it just once. Alan tries to back away, but Tanner and his friend continue to intimidate him by following Alan and repeating the voice message. Hey, did you quit thinking about my twinkle? No. Hey, did you quit thinking about my twinkle? Get on my Facebook Alan repeatedly tells Tanner to stop, threatens to call the police, and even pushes the phone away from his face. But because Tanner doesn't listen and continues to intimidate him. Stop! Yup, Tanner's tasteless pranks finally caught up to him and he faced the consequences of his actions. He was shot. And as you can see by the comments under various news clips about the situation, the majority of people are actually on Alan's side. This isn't a prank gone wrong, this is a prank gone right. Good, he messed with a complete stranger and got one for it. I hope he does get charged with harassment. I stand with Alan Colley, let him go. He managed to do what nobody else has been able to do. Got everyone to agree that Cook got what was coming. The shooter has a legitimate defense claim. Watching Tanner through your screen and actually being there in the moment, experiencing this live are two completely different things. And that's part of the reason why the jury voted how they did. The jury found the defendant, Alan Coley, not guilty of aggravated malicious wounding and the use of firearm for aggravated malicious wounding. What they did find him guilty for is the unlawful discharge of a firearm in a dwelling. And just take a look at Tanner's reaction after the jury's decision was made. Regardless of the outcome, you know, the jury's the jury and we totally respect how our law plays out and this was the outcome today and we respect that. Yeah, Tanner, and if you think that this whole thing would have shot some sense into him, you're wrong. I guess I'll just have to keep watching. So you'll continue to make videos? Yeah, probably. We'll see, you know? How disappointed are you about this? So I really don't care. Way. I mean, it is what it is. It's God's plan at the end of the day, so. Yup, despite the fact that Tanner was physically shot, the jury wasn't on his side, and the entire internet hates him, He's continuing with his pranks. And what's sad is that even though his prank videos are actually videos of him bullying and harassing others, his videos continue to be monetized. Tanner deteriorates the lives of others, encourages deviant behavior, and waits police services and court services all for some money. And it's sad that YouTube and TikTok continue to allow it, monetize it, and take a cut of that money. All right, so next we're gonna be taking a look at Alfred Lewis, a 19 year old prankster based in Texas who was arrested and charged for doing something which he thought was a genius prank. So back in October, Alfred and his filmer Kingston Miker thought it would be a great idea to randomly go up to people and sucker punch them from the back. Oh my God, bro, Ike. First time I saw that clip, I'm like, there's no way is the news outlet pranking me because Tanner Cook was one level of stupidity, but Alfred Lewis, it exceeds that level and makes me lose all hope in the future of pranksters. In what world is this a prank? I wanna know how this guy actually thought it would be funny to go up to people and punch them from behind. In this clip, you can see Alfred chasing a man, grabbing him from behind and clocking him in the back of the head. Oh, hold up, because according to Alfred, we the viewers aren't seeing the full story because apparently there's actually a beautiful ending to this heartwarming prank I know like from the video all you see is like the bad part about it but um, what people didn't see was that I shook his hand after and how I had gave the man a hug bro come on I highly doubt either the men would have shook his hand and if this is what he's referring to when he says hug then Sure, because I doubt any of them would have willingly gave him a hug after what he did. He is so lucky that neither of them had what Alan Colley had on him because if they did, this could have ended a lot worse. Now, in terms of stupidity, calling this a prank, I mean, it's already funny, but this entire situation gets even more ridiculous. Before you go out and you do anything that you feel is bad or that could look bad, make sure like people know or just don't do it at all. What? <laughs> 
I feel like this could be a meme because what is that response? Alfred doesn't give two craps. He doesn't seem to have any remorse. So as I said, Alfred was charged and arrested for what he did in those two clips. According to the Harris County Sheriff in Texas, Alfred was charged with assault bodily injury and aggravated robbery. Wait a second, robbery? Yep, you heard that one, right? One of the attacks, prosecutors say Lewis tried to rob the man of his cell phone at gunpoint and threatened to shoot him in the foot when he refused. They say Lewis then punched and choked the victim. This man was out there doing what any citizen in Harris County would do when they he was approached by these two males and robbed or attempted to be robbed at gunpoint. What? You can't just commit a crime and try to backtrack by saying it was a prank. There's no way this guy actually thought it was a funny prank idea, right? I want to assume that he knows this isn't a prank and is just using that word in an attempt to try to mitigate the situation, except there's one problem. He's the one who uploaded those videos onto TikTok. Seriously, who in their right mind films themselves committing a crime and then uploads it to social media? I feel like I'm witnessing an early April Fool's joke and all of this is scripted television, but the reality is that this is real. People are actually sucker punching people and calling it a prank. So third and final, we're going to be traveling all the way from the United States to the United Kingdom and looking at the infamous Mizzy. Meet Mizzy, real name Bakari Bronze Ogaro. He's a 19 year old based in the United Kingdom and a father of one. He's a quote unquote prankster who blew up in around May of this year and is notorious for his so-called pranks that took it way too far. If the name rings a bell, then you might have heard of this video which went viral where he enters a random family's home. James? James? Hi. You man come? Hello, James. We need to speak to James. James? Hi. Hi. Um, that James? Is this no, where the study back. group is? Study no. group? No. What do I miss this? No. Um, study group? Wait, well, this is not where the study yeah, group is? We got kids, man. Oh, you got kids? Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought this was the study group. I actually thought. In what world is going onto someone's private property and entering their home without permission a prank? It's considered trespassing. Mizzy is lucky that only the video blew up and not his brain because if he were to try that in the United States, especially in a home that has children in it, this would have ended a lot differently. So once that video went viral, it created a lot of outrage and people started to do a deeper dive into Mizzy and to no surprise, he has multiple other pranks which are just as bad. In this video here, he approaches an elderly lady, picks up her dog and runs away with it. Uh, hello. You got a nice dog. Sorry? You got a nice dog. She's lovely, she's yes. Family dog. Don't run like gang, hold on the gang. We are side! <laughs> <laughs> in another video, he enters a random car parked on the street and pretends he's an Uber customer. And as you can see, the driver of the vehicle, and rightfully so, gets extremely heated to have a stranger hop into his car and continue to cause distress when asked to leave. Get out. Why are you getting angry for? Because it's not an Uber. Why are you getting angry for? Uh, do you want to get angry? Because we can get angry. Don't close the door. Don't close. What, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh, and you may think that these pranks are bad, but they come nowhere close to a set of pranks that him and his buddies have done where they literally go up to random people and ask them if they want to die. Where are you going from? It's you with the glasses. Well, yeah, do the die. What? 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 Hey, yo, bro. Where are you going, fam? I saw you from over there, yeah? Hey, stop, stop, bro. Stop, fam. I saw you from over there, bro. Do not die, fam. Hey, stop, bro. Hey, yo. Do not die, bro. Hey, bro, yo, do not yo, die. Bro. Yo, hey, I do not yo, die, bro. Back it out. Back it out, bro. Leave me alone. Bro, why are you going into a shot for? Back it out, fam. Leave me alone. Yes, leave me alone. Back it out, bro. Leave me alone. Back it leave out, bro. Hey, look, die. It's hair dye, bro. It's just hair dye. It's just hair dye, bro. Like your hair. I just saw you from over there. Hey, man, this and look, me, man. the camera's there, bro. It's and in one instance, he makes it even worse by combing someone's long hair before asking them, "Do you want to die?" I saw you from over there. I like your hair still. You got some nice hair. It's nice and luscious. I'm perfectly fine. We're gonna die. And it gets even worse because not only does he put his hands in his coat pocket, but he even says that he could take it out, as in take out his strap. You're gonna die, bro. Bro, don't even answer that right now. Is it serious, bro? You're trying to answer the phone? You're gonna die, bro, because I can take it out right now, bro. What's wrong? Huh? What's wrong? I can take it out right now. Do you want to die? Yes or no? So after committing actual crimes and threatening to end people, you would hope that he would face actual consequences. Well, 
Not really. Back in May, after filming the video of him entering the family's home, he was arrested and given a two-year criminal behavior order, banning him from uploading videos to social media that don't have the permission of all those featured in the video. But only a few days later, he was taken once again, and this time by a plain clothes officer after breaching his criminal behavior order. Yup, only a few days after being released, he went back to making his so-called prank. So all of that went down in May, and we haven't heard about him too much since that time period, but recently, we've gotten a major update. After months of outrage and countless pranks, which in reality are just him harassing harassing other people and even committing real crimes, he is finally being punished. The TikTok prankster Mizzy has been jailed for 18 weeks by a judge who said his videos were not funny. Mizzy was found guilty of two counts of breaching a court order prohibiting him from sharing footage of people without their consent at his trial last month. Now, 18 weeks, it's not a lot and you will be serving his time at a young offender institution, but at least he's receiving some sort of punishment. But it does suck because his punishment is less than five months and we know that when he's released, he's probably gonna be going back to doing the same thing. Actually, no, I lied because he's probably gonna be doing even worse things because that's how social media works. In order to stay relevant, Mizzy's gonna have to make his pranks even more controversial in order to have people still talking about it. At the end of the day, I really only see two ways out of this. Number one, Mizzy has been kicked out of school multiple times and because of that, on top of his massive hate, he's gonna have a tough time finding a real job. He's doing his pranks for the money and if he were to just stop making these pranks, he is screwed. He has no way of getting a job. And considering the fact that he has a one-year-old who he has to provide for, he needs the money and he's gonna do what he has to do to get that money. So with that being said, number one is that he needs to be given access to opportunities so that he can get a real job. And number two, Mizzy could finally find out. Mizzy has effed around, he's harassed multiple people, he's stolen a lady's dog, tried leapfrogging over someone, entered a family's home, and straight up asked people if they want to die but he hasn't found out the hard way. If Mizzy continues to F around and makes his pranks even more controversial, he's gonna find out. So today we looked at Tanner Cook, Alfred Lewis, and Bakari Bronzogaro. And after watching their pranks and analyzing them, I think we can safely say that these three are definitely towards the top of the list of worst pranksters of 2023. By not banning this type of content or at minimum demonetizing these types of videos, all these social media platforms are enabling their behavior and the repercussions of their behavior to continue. And without any hard punishments, they're just gonna continue to F around and push out videos until the point comes where one day they won't be able to find out. Anyway guys, that's officially gonna do it for this video. If you are both educated and entertained, please consider leaving a like and subscribe if you haven't already. There are more pranks like these which I did not take a look at. And if you want me to take a look at them and make a video about it, let me know. But anyways, until next time, it's been Ivan Steph. Peace. I know what Santa Claus is giving these three for Christmas.